Hi everybody, it's Gemma, welcome back to Pampered Wolf. As you are already aware, I am extremely outspoken when it comes to fragrance and those irritating essential oils within skincare, especially when the brands that have these irritating essential oils and fragrance within their skincare market their skincare at people with a sensitive skin. Those with acne prone skin, blemish prone skin, melasma, rosacea, it just blows my mind. It's a big no-no for me. However, during lockdown, I have had chance to reflect on things a little, to look at things from a completely different perspective, to analyze things, to be overly critical at times, like I'm sure we've all been during lockdown when we've been by ourselves. And my opinions on fragrance in skincare have slightly softened. And during this video, I'm gonna tell you why. Now, if you are new here, hi, my name's Gemma. I am a fully qualified esthetician and lover of everything beauty, skincare, and makeup. I no longer practice in a salon or a clinic as my full-time job is now YouTube. I upload videos on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 8 p.m. London time. And I'm also on Instagram if you want to check me out over there. It's at Pampered Wolf, all lowercase, no spaces. I would really appreciate it if you would consider clicking on that subscribe button, also the notification bell, so you don't don't miss any future uploads. Okay, so I've previously done a video all about fragrance and essential oils in skincare and how they can seriously damage your skin. If you haven't seen that already, I will link that up here for you. And also I'll try and remember to link it in the description box so you can watch that video a little bit later on. Now I'm really pleased that I got to share my opinion with you at the time. Every single statement that I made within that video could be backed up with clinical evidence from clinical research done by clinical research scientists. However, I do feel like the argument I presented within that video was extremely one-sided. I can only apologize for that. I usually do better than that on my channel. I usually try and cover both sides, but I really just was very focused and to the point, fragrance and essential oils are bad, don't use them. And there was an element of scaremongering in there. When I've watched it back several times, I've thought, wow, that's a little strong. So I wanted to rectify that within this video because although the clinical research and the evidence hasn't changed, there is another side to the argument. So I'm gonna put that right now. And like I said, my opinion has softened a little bit. I run this channel on honesty. If I've had a change of opinion, I always share it with you. So let's do that now. Okay, so let's just recap the facts from the previous video. Firstly, I said that there are two ways which fragrance can be categorized on the ingredients list. The first one is fragrance. Now, fragrance is made up of lots of different ingredients and chemicals all mixed together to make up that specific fragrance. And you'll never know what those ingredients and chemicals are because the brands don't have to disclose that information to you. The second one is with essential oils. And usually when essential oils are used in a product, they are used usually written on the ingredients list so you will know exactly which essential oils are within that product. The other facts were fragrance has no benefit to the skin whatsoever. Fact. Fragrance is a sensitizing ingredient. Fact. It can cause inflammation and irritation on the skin. Fact. It can cause you to become allergic and sensitive to other very beneficial ingredients within your skincare. Fact. It can interfere with the efficacy of other ingredients, for an example, retinoids. Fact. And high aromatic essential oils, although they are natural, can still be sensitizing and irritating on the skin. Fact. So I'm gonna put all of the high fragranced essential oils on the screen for you now so you can take a screen grab for your records. Now, if you've got a sensitive skin, this is a really, really important part of this video because these are the oils that have shown to have significant irritating qualities for the skin. And if you've got sensitive skin, these are the ones that you really do want to avoid. So let me just read these out for you anyway, so they stay on the screen for a little bit longer. There's all of the citrus oils, all of the mint oils, and the other oils to avoid are clary sage, eucalyptus, geranium, ginger, jasmine, lemongrass, neroli, 
tea tree, oregano, patchouli, rosemary, sage, sandalwood, ylang ylang, lavender, rose, and the other irritants are geraniol, linalool, limonene, citronellol, eugenol, citronella, citral, and hexel cinnamal. Now let's just talk about those statements that I've just made and also that I made in the previous video just for a minute. Fragrance and essential oils can cause irritation and inflammation. They also can cause you to become allergic to other ingredients and all of the other negative things that they can do. But everyone's skin is completely different and although you might have negative reactions, you also might not. Some essential oils like tea tree, citronella, rosemary, lemongrass, thyme and cinnamon can be beneficial for an acne prone skin because they are anti-inflammatories and also a lot of them are antibacterial as well. Some people have great success with those, others these cause inflammation and a lot of irritation for. Also those lavender oils and rose oils which were also on the list of oils to avoid can be extremely soothing on the skin. Some people get a lot of benefit out of them, others it causes sensitivity, inflammation and a lot of irritation. So there are two sides to every story and not everybody is going to deal with the same essential oil in the same way. Another thing that I really need to mention because this is a real area of confusion within ingredients of skincare products is that essential oils aren't identical to plant extracts and that is really really important to understand when you are reading the ingredients list of your skincare products. You really need to know what's in them to see how they are going to react on your skin. So let me give you an example of this. A lot of essential oils can be really sensitizing and really irritating whereas a lot of plant extracts can actually be very beneficial and an example of this is rosemary. Now rosemary essential oil can be extremely irritating and sensitizing on the skin for some but rosemary extract is extremely soothing. It's a great antioxidant and it's really cooling on the skin so can be very very beneficial. Now of course there are some plant extracts that are also really irritating and sensitizing and if you don't understand an ingredient I highly recommend that you look look them up before you buy the product. An example of what can be an irritating plant extract is rose. Now rose oil was on the list to avoid earlier on because it can be really irritating and cause a lot of inflammation and discomfort. Rose extract is the same and it's because rose extract has a lot of the fragrant components within the extract which is why it causes a lot of irritation and inflammation on the skin as well. Now on the other side like I said earlier on rose is in so many different products at the moment. Rose mists, rose sprays, there's rose toners. These are supposed to really calm the skin, these are supposed to take away redness. Now this works for some, but for a lot of people it can be very, very irritating because of that fragrant component within the oil and also within the extract. So just approach with caution. Some people it'll work for, some people it won't. Another thing I failed to mention within the previous video and I cannot believe that I didn't actually say this and shame on me, is that fragrance is often added to skincare products to mask a really bad smell because a lot of ingredients that go into skincare don't smell very nice and when they're mixed with other ingredients that also don't smell very nice the end result is a little bit like a vomit smell and let's be honest nobody wants to smother a cream all over their face that smells like vomit so a brand will add a fragrance or some essential oils to that product to mask that nasty smell, making it a much more pleasurable experience for you to apply that to your face. Nobody wants to walk around all day smelling like a foot. So sometimes it's not an unnecessary process of adding the fragrance and the essential oils to a product. The product might have a lot of really beneficial ingredients in there, but it just smells a little funky. So they add something to it to make it smell a little bit more pleasant so people will buy it and get the benefit from those ingredients. 
Also, let's not forget the power of fragrance. Fragrance can have a hugely positive impact on us. It can lift our mood, it can relieve anxiety, it can transport us to a different time and a different place. It can spark feelings and memories that we'd completely forgotten about. It can make us feel really luxurious and really well looked after like a big warm hug and it can be extremely relaxing and satisfying. So not everything about fragrance and essential oils within skincare is a negative. There are some real positives to surrounding ourselves with fragrance. Fragrance at times significantly helped me during lockdown. When I was at my lowest, when I'd not seen my friends and family for such a long time, which I know we can all empathize with because it's something that we all had to endure, I used to escape to the bath, put a couple of drops of essential oils on an empty toilet roll holder, just the cylinder, and put that on top of the taps and let the steam carry the smell all the way around the room. It was just so luxurious and so beautiful and really took me to another place really, really lifted my mood. I know the power of fragrance really does sound quite trivial, but for me, in that moment of darkness, it really did work. Also, aromatherapy works for my sister-in-law, Alison. She absolutely loves aromatherapy oil. She makes up her own blends. She smothers them absolutely everywhere. We disagree on this all the time. We never argue because we're not those sorts of people. She has her opinion, I have my opinion. Mine works for me, hers works for her. Her skin's absolutely fantastic, so who am I to argue? Also, another thing I want to mention is that my mum has been using fragranced skincare, and that's not with essential oils, that's with fragrance for decades. And my mum's skin is pretty good. Now, I must say that I got my hands on my mum's skincare routine around about 18 months ago, and her skin has seriously improved since then. During that 18 month period, I've removed all of the fragrance out of her facial skincare and I've also increased all the active ingredients that she applies to her face. Now we'll never know if her skin improvement and the skin improvement has been considerable is down to the fact that she no longer has fragrance in her skincare or down to the fact that there are more active ingredients within her facial skincare routine. I would like to think it was a bit of both, but we'll never know and really it doesn't matter. The point that I'm trying to make is that for decades my mum had fragrance within her skincare and she's never had a negative reaction and her face has never spontaneously burst into flames. Now there are some studies that suggest that using fragrance within skincare can speed up the aging process because it can cause photosensitivity which means more sun damage which means more fine lines and wrinkles and hyperpigmentation and sagging and all that jazz and by removing Removing the fragrance in skincare, you will notice a slow in the aging process. And although that's happened for my mum, we cannot be 100% certain that it's because we've removed that fragrance within her skincare because we didn't have a crystal ball a year ago. We didn't know what her skin was going to look like in a year. All we can say is her skin has definitely improved. Now, I've seen some disastrous, epic fail skincare reactions in my time, but no one's face has fallen off yet, to my knowledge. And we can't say with 100% certainty that the fragrance within the skincare was 100% to blame for the skincare reaction. It might not have helped, it might have been a contributing factor, but it might not have been to blame 100%. In fact, it might not have had anything to do with the skincare reaction at all. So do I think everyone should throw out all of their scented skincare products? Well, no, not really. I'm a huge fan of scented body lotions and hand creams and bath products, including shampoos and conditioners. I'll wear an SPF with an added fragrance because I feel like the benefits outweigh the negatives. I'll use a scented face wash because it's not on the skin for long enough to cause any damage. And I'm nowhere near as precious when it comes to makeup. But when I get a DM from somebody who says that their face has flared up completely, they've got a lot of redness, they've got a lot of irritation, maybe they've got spots and they've never suffered with spots before, the first thing I ever tell them is remove all the scented products that you have in your skincare. 
remove them completely because although they may not have been 100% to blame for that sensitivity and irritation, by removing them, you will quicken up the process of getting rid of that irritation and inflammation and those spots because they can only hinder the problem. They will never make it better. In my view, fragrance and essential oils in skincare pose a level of risk, and it's exactly that. It's a risk. And for some of you, that level of risk is going to be higher than for others. If you have a sensitive skin, if you have an acne-prone skin, if you are prone to sensitivity, redness, irritation, if you are blemish-prone, if you have other unrelated allergies, if you are prone to allergic reactions, if you have melasma, rosacea, eczema, psoriasis, dermatitis, I still wholeheartedly believe that the level of risk is far too high for you. Fragrance and essential oils will only exacerbate your conditions. The negatives seriously outweigh the positives and you shouldn't be using any sort of fragrance or essential oils within your skincare. If I was to bring out my own skincare line, and that is the absolute dream, the skincare line would still be 100% fragrance free. And that's not because I wouldn't want you to feel pampered and luxurious when you were applying the products. It would be because the emphasis of the skincare line would be to improve your skin, to make it the best that it can physically be. And I still don't think that is 100% achievable if you are using fragrance within your skincare. Not only that, I'd want my brand to be inclusive and not everybody can use fragrance in their skincare. There are those of you with a sensitive skin and also those of you that suffer with migraines. So it's a no-brainer for me. It would definitely still be fragrance free. So in response to all of the pampered Wolfpack members who had their favourite ride or die skincare product that was full of fragrance and now they daren't use it and it's stuck in a drawer, is it foolish to use scented skincare on a sensitive skin? Absolutely. Can it damage everyone's skin? Yes it can. Should we all avoid it? Probably. Can it make you feel really good? Definitely. Is it gonna kill you? No. So I hope I've put up a little bit more of a balanced view on essential oils and fragrance within skincare. Although I do still believe that your skin is better off without it, I do understand why people enjoy applying it and that's okay too, each to their own. Hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Hope to see you all in the next one. Bye everyone.